Hey everybody, I got a really special show for you here. This is my friend, Dean. How you doing? Great. Good to hear. Dean, you might know as possibly the inventor of the Segway, but however, we're gonna do a little bit something different. We're gonna show a really cool 3D printer and we're gonna talk about FIRST Robotics. Now, uh, before we do that though, you really wanna see this printing, right? I really do. All right, I'm gonna start a print because I wanna see it go too. There we go. So this is the Positron 3D printer. And the reason that we're bringing it here to you is because we think this might be a valuable asset for a FIRST Robotics team. And I just kind of wanted to get your take on it. Have you ever seen a printer that prints upside down? Believe it or not, I have not. We have lots of 3D printers in my day job here at Tech, and I've got a beautiful, maybe antique one at my home, <laughs> uh, but I've never seen one that prints upside down. So the upside down printing really uh, kind of is because of the way it's built. So it's built for portability. When things are taken apart and it folds down, it fits inside a standard filament box. It's crazy. And I know I know space is, is a consideration for FIRST Robotics teams when they have all sorts of tools available. And so we thought maybe this could be an interesting addition to their tool set because it doesn't take up much room. We're going to be printing with PLA material. This is called Aquamarine and it's from a company called Printed Solid. They're not far away. And we're gonna be printing a little calibration cube. This is a heated bed. It uses an ITO coating, and this is a positive and negative terminal. So you still get to see through the bed, but it'll heat up to safely ADC. Uh, one of the interesting things you get with a glass bed is you get to see the first layer going down from the underside. Normally with a, a polymer printer, you know, you see it laying down the first layer and you kind of have to drag your finger across just to make sure it's proper. This one, you get to watch it. So Anthony from Positron, he was the one that kind of schooled me on the, the, the extended details of the machine. And what I, what I didn't realize, an ITO coating is the same thing that's on cell phones that tracks your touch. But because it's a resistive surface, you put 24 volts through it, and now you have yourself a heated bed that you can see through. Beautiful. Well, this is going now. I, I'd like to ask you a little bit about FIRST Robotics, if that's all right. That would be great. How many FIRST Robotics teams are there here in the U.S.? Well, it's hard to say in the U.S. because we're now multinational, but here's, this is the 2025 season. Oh, okay. And we're just now in the beginning of the, uh, the month of all the playoffs. If you want to know where you'll see first teams, well, there are 182 oh, regional that? events. <laughs> oh, not only may see it, you may keep it and well, attend, attend an event every weekend between now and April. The U.S. has a huge majority, but other countries are catching on. That's great. And 3D printing, I, I believe, is something that really lends itself to being a, a very useful tool for all of these FIRST Robotics teams. Well, 3D printing is a perfect, perfect partnership with FIRST for at least two reasons. One is the whole premise of FIRST was to convince kids that science, technology, engineering, A, it's really cool. <laughs> And B, I would agree. and B, it's really accessible. Now, part of the problem is if a kid doesn't happen to have a milling machine and a lathe and all sorts of pretty expensive, exotic, and somewhat dangerous tools and the tooling to somewhat use it, dangerous. they might have trouble turning some great idea, some abstract idea into a physical thing. You give a kid a 3D printer, and if you can think it, if you can imagine that size and shape and structure as long as it fits in you know, this containment, but you, you show them a technology like this and you let them see within a few hours, they can take a 2D picture of a model or a 3D picture on a computer screen and it, turn it into a physical device. I think just the whole world of 3D printing is changing the way even big manufacturing operations see the ability to get parts done you can see a lot of things go wrong quickly when you have a real part versus a computer model. So companies, of course, have adopted 3D printing because it speeds up the development process. But for many schools, it goes from, how could I possibly build that robot? I don't have all the tools to give me a 3D printer and I'll have a first team. You know, one of the things I wanted to ask, though, about the first teams and the 3D printers and bringing people in, I, I really think this is starting to lend itself to manufacturing and supply chain and educating people about that. Because a first team 
might not have a printer that creates the part in the material that they want, and so now they have to rely on someone else to make it for them. Do you envision a future where FIRST has its own 3D printing supply chain? It was a number of years ago, I was asked to be a speaker at one of the early 3D printer conferences. There weren't machines this small and this cost-effective back then, but I challenged all the companies that were there making these machines with the following. I said, the new kindler, gentler dean won't ask you to deliver one of your machines to every school that has a first team. Okay. For one thing, every school doesn't need that full time. What I said is, why don't we donate enough of your machines to a couple of the schools that will commit enough resources that they will learn not only how to use the machines, but they will agree that every time another school in their region that's a member of FIRST sends them, during the first growing season, first competition season, they will send them a file. They will have within 24 hours a promise that they will create that part and get it right back to that school that's building that competitive robot. And I thought that the companies would love it because it will expose their core technology and their mm -hmm. machines to many, many, many schools and to a lot of the engineers that are mentors for all these kids and a lot of the companies that are desperate to increase the supply chain uh, of kids that will become their future employees. And lo and behold, a whole bunch of the companies donated hundreds of machines. Really? And that's when machines were very big and very expensive. <laughs> very big, very but expensive, But we only had a yes. few thousand teams back then. Now we have tens of thousands of teams, but now with a machine this size, I would hope that we'll find a way to say many individual teams will simply get these machines, but there may be teams that will struggle for resources since one of the themes of FIRST is it's a cooperation. That we actually cooperation, trade. I like that. We trademark Did you the really? Word. Oh yeah. Okay, good, because that's you a get, great word. Well, what we tell all the kids is, you know, you get thousands of robots in a competition. Most of the robots, all but a few of the robots will lose. But the goal is all the kids will win. So the goal in my mind would be to make sure that certainly every team that competes in first will either directly have a 3D printer because the power it gives them to immediately make and test parts, or they will be part of a FIRST network and some nearby school that's a member of FIRST that's involved in a cooperation that that other team will be able to compete with great 3D printed parts. Oh, I love that. You're essentially talking about teaching thousands of kids manufacturing. And by the way, you might be teaching thousands of kids starting from scratch manufacturing, but what we're finding is you introduce 3D printing and you're going to teach very sophisticated engineers and tool makers and machinists about how to manufacture, how to design parts. But once you really understand how 3D printing works, you realize you've opened up opportunities to make parts hollow, for instance. It's very hard to machine the inside of a sphere. Yes, that's right? true. <laughs> and so I think putting 3D printing in a very visible space in front of very sophisticated engineers that have had long careers in designing parts they start to think differently when they see what you can do with a 3D printer. I would agree. There, I, I, I've known machinists who've spent decades in front of like a Haas mill, right? And you show them a 3D printer and it almost like it unlocks a new piece of their mind and they get to think slightly different. Okay, so now we get all these machines to FIRST Robotics Clubs and we've got manufacturing. These kids are actually running manufacturing and there's supply chain being taught and they get to the championship and someone wins. How do we continue this? How do we, how do we kind of keep the excitement going, not necessarily for supply chain and manufacturing, but for the joy of 3D printing? What do you so, think? So here's the thing. The season's over at the end of April, as you saw, they'll right. all leave Houston, but the printer's still sitting at home and they're still thinking about getting ready for next year and they might still have other projects that they want to do. Our goal at first is to ignite the spark and to show kids that if they develop that muscle hanging between their ears, there's, there's almost nothing these days that you can't do. And that wasn't true until 3D printing and a few other things came on. You know. And now you can make very intricate precision parts on a small machine without all sorts of tooling, without all sorts of expense, that it's now real enough and cost effective enough to let technology like 3D printing uh, be part of school. And just to prove it, 
Um, we in our little state of New Hampshire have a governor that really has for the last eight years as our governor embraced first and watched it grow and watched it become more effective all over the schools in our little state of New Hampshire. But when he saw the new XRP kit, I mean, with DigiKey, with Raspberry Pi, with STM Micro, th there's, there's so much power of the sponsors that created that stuff that if you look at that electronics and then you see that the, the whole XRP kit comes either with 3D printed parts so that you can build and start your robot, or you can take the files that come with that kit and print the That's rest right. of the, the robot. When he saw that and realized that we could build it for under $100, he said, Dean, I know you've been asking me for years to make sure there's a first team from every school in this state. No, no state has done that yet. But he went one beyond and said, Dean, with the capabilities here at this cost, I'm going to make sure there's a first robotics XRP kit in every classroom, every classroom. in the state of New Hampshire. <laughs> and then I took the governor to a place, to one of our community colleges, and there he saw racks of 3D printers knocking out the chassis for all the robots into which we were putting the Raspberry Pi right. brain behind them. And suddenly we had a complete kit that's about the size in the package of a big textbook and cost about what a big textbook <laughs> costs. And our kit, unlike the textbook, will actually be used. It will actually excite kids. And it will actually, we hope, start a bunch of kids thinking about careers in technology. So as you know, uh, 3D Printing Nerd, my company with SparkFun, with our partnership, we're doing the manufacturing of the chassis and all the parts for that XRP kit. Please thank everybody there for me. <laughs> They're sure. gonna change kids' attitudes all over this country when they start using those XRP kits. Oh, I think so. Um, I had fun. Obviously, the, the kickoff happens at your house. Yes, it and, does. And uh, we weren't able to make it, but I, you did get to show that XRP video that we made. Great video, oh, by the way. See, I appreciate that. That's it, a ringing it, it, endorsement. It excited a lot of people. And again, I was about to announce that our governor is making these kits available in every school and I knew in every classroom. And I knew people would say, what's this kit? What does it do? So. That video answered a lot of questions. Well, I'm glad. And, and hopefully that becomes a resource for all of these teachers in classrooms that are gonna have these XRP kits that your former governor was saying were was gonna happen. And then hopefully he says nice things to other governors and they get it going. Because the, the goal eventually would be to have more XRP kits in more classrooms and let more kids be exposed to it, right? That is the goal. I mean, the name of our organization, first, for 33 years, kids want to be first in sports. For, for us, the name of our not-for-profit organization is for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. First is not an education program. Let the teachers educate. <laughs> you just got to get the kids excited about wanting the product. Kids have no trouble showing up after school, spending every afternoon for hours practicing any sport because they want to be first at bouncing a ball. Or kick. And yet math, they'll take it past fail. Physics, they won't take it all. And these kids could have exciting lifetime careers in the world of technology. So we've said, let's create a sport that's every bit as exciting as all the others, where kids want to develop the skills to be first. But the only difference is we want to create the only sport where every kid can turn pro. Right now in this country, there's a desperate shortage for millions of people with the skills that you need to be an engineer. What, what we're really hoping is that we're gonna open up for all the kids that have never thought about the world of science and technology, we're gonna open up opportunities that will literally change the way they see their future and they will become part of uh, what we hope will be a very uh, successful, innovative generation of kids that will keep, keep America, you know, competitive globally, give us better answers to all the issues we have. I couldn't agree with you more. And actually, this is a great way to segue to this model because it's done printing. Dean, thank you very much. I really very appreciate well. it. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Look in the camera right there and tell everybody why they should know about FIRST Robotics. Only if you care about the future of your kids, your community, your company, your country, you should know about FIRST because one way or another, Within a very short time, the kids that are in school today are gonna to be the people we depend on to drive the future of this country. 
And we need way more kids involved in technology, solving our problems and the world's problems. I want to give a special shout out to the Positron uh, company that made this little thing. And the founder of that company came through First Robotics about 10 years ago. And he will tell you that his success has in part uh, due to his involvement in First. I think it gave him uh, the courage to do what he's doing. It gave him the background uh, and the drive to develop the skill sets to do this. Kids will understand the power of technology when they start playing with the XRP kit, the hardware, the electronics, the software, and the mechanics and the capability to make parts. So thank you all and get more people involved in first. There we go. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Positron for bringing us out here. Thanks to LDO for bringing us out here. And thanks to everybody who made it this far, because if you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and get involved in FIRST Robotics. And as always, high five. You know high five. Ooh, crisp. <laughs>